Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm in a different woods and the forecast is not very good. Apparently it's going to rain this afternoon even though it's trying to rain now. So what my first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for two suitable trees and then we're going to try and put up a hoochie or a tarp to get us out of the rain whether we're doing bushcraft skills, making something to eat or just want to chill out in the woods while it's raining. Because it can be a nice place when it rains. It's quiet and there's nobody going to be here. And it's no, no place like it. So, first thing I need to do is look for two suitable trees. So what I'm trying to do is find two trees that are wide enough apart. So I can easily put up my tarp without it being over big. Or too small. Because there's nothing like... Trying to put up a tarp when the trees are too small or too far apart. Now I'm thinking this one here and possibly this one here that looks like quite a nice length so let's give it a go. Okay we found our site we're going to use this tree and we're going to use this tree. But the most important thing to do before we put any tarps up or any hammocks up is look for deadfall. Deadfall's a killer. Some people call it widow makers. Some people call it deadfall, obviously. You just look up, is it safe? Ask yourself that question. Is any trees that are dead leaning this way gonna fall onto me in the night? If they are, can I take them out? If not, I've gotta find another site because obviously I don't wanna be laying there and get squashed by a tree. Not good. Okay, got my tarp. Got my two trees. Okay, we need to get this up before it starts raining. So the first thing I need to do is tie off one end, then tie off the other end. We'll go through the knots as we go. And so everybody should be aware of them. But what I'm doing here is I've got no mechanical, i.e. metal tie off things. I don't know what they call them. Um, you see many people using them. I'm just gonna tie it with traditional knots, which I think is better because then you're not relying on anything mechanical. So everything I'm doing here, is not based more reliable than you if you lose something you've got to worry about it you can just tie it off it's a much better system another thing is worth pointing out that when you do this again it's like the fire steel on the last episode is practice this stuff when it's quite a nice day because sometimes if you're hiking out and you're going to be doing some you know you're going to get to camp late you're going to need to put your hooch up you need to put your hammock up you need to do this almost in the darkness. Obviously you've got a head torch to sort of show you, but if you haven't got a head torch and you've done this enough, it becomes natural because you've practiced and everything's the same. Don't ever change it or deviate it. Once you find a system that works for you, it's worth sticking to that system. You may want to tweak it, fine tune it, that's fine. But once you've got it, don't change from it. Because if there's a scenario where you need to get your hammock up quick because the weather is turning bad on you, and you want to get your hoochie up, you just want to get out of the rain, you need to be able to do it as quickly as possible and using the system that you know. If you're chopping and changing all the time, you're just going to struggle and it isn't worth it. And that's like most things in bushcraft. It's nice to try other procedures, but there's no real set rules. You can do it how you like, but there is a basic way of doing it and you can deviate from that in any which way you want. So without further ado, let's do it. Okay, so the knot I'm going to do this side is going to just be a quick Siberian knot, and I'll show you how that goes. So what you want to do, obviously, is just pick your height. Like I said, I'm going for head height. So what you do is you put the cord around the tree, and all I'm doing is I'm literally putting both lines over my hand. I'm going round like that. I'm going under, down, point up, and pull this and fruit and that forms a knot and what happens is you can still adjust this here and then you can pull that tight like so and that just ain't going nowhere and really what's really good about that knot is if I pull this and then it comes undone as easy as that so I'll show you again up around the tree over your hand there's a dead end so you go around your hand with the dead end, point down, under, twist, and up. Bring the dead end through, form a knot, bow knot like that. 
slide it along and just give it a little tug like so and then you're done that's it it's as easy as that in the dark that's dead easy if you literally got it in the mind okay other end okay so we're ready for the second knot and here we go okay so the second knot is a little bit more trickier than the first knot and this is the most important knot in the respect of you need to be able to pull this up tight and then tie it off so I'll show you how I do it and it's I've been using this method probably for 15 years and it's never let me down ever so here we go so the first thing you want to do is obviously wrap it around the tree and what I normally do is I go around twice you can go around once it doesn't really matter but I'll go around twice and then what you want to do is put this rope here and over the top and under and what that's going to do is when you pull it that way it's going to tighten that up like so and then what I do is I go around and as you can see that is tight it's not going nowhere and I'm still holding it one end so what I want to do this this is the easy bit as well so all you do is you go over the top form a circle I think they call it a half hitch you can either just finish off by doing that by doing a loop and then just do a loop again right and, and that and that is all you need honestly look that ain't going nowhere and all you got to do is because that's loose you just push it through and it's like the Siberian knot you pull it and it comes undone dead easy okay so that's the two knots done so all we want to do now is pull it out and pin it down and that should be it that should be it but so here we go so right next next job is to peg these out right so all I've done here is on the corners I've just tied this paracord on and I've wrapped it up in a certain way so when I want to use it again keeping it easy and simple you know the kiss system keep it simple and then what I do is I've done a knot and I undo it and then I can pull that out and place it either tie it around the tree or peg it to the ground okay so what I'm having to do here is I'm gonna to have to peg it because there isn't a tree within the length of my paracord I could extend the paracord or just make a simple peg to go into the ground I've cut a V in there like so I can show you how to do that later and what I want to do is I just want to peg it in here I'm not too bothered about getting the distance exactly right it's, it's irrelevant when you're doing this at night you can't be messing around so I take my axe use the back of the axe as a hammer just put that stake into the ground making sure that my cut that I did for the rope to sit in is sitting nicely round the back obviously the softer the ground the longer the pegs so that goes round like so and now and now we've got to do our knot so here we go so this is a more of a complicated knot but a very useful knot nevertheless especially if you're camping and your metal plastic slider goes this is a very good way of getting around that so without further ado this we call this our live line and we call this our dead end obviously because it doesn't go nowhere so you've got this line running from the top right down to the peg and this is the dead one that comes back up the other way so what we do is literally i normally just hold it put my thumb there so that the way do is round her off go over once go right round. go twice go three times go four times go five times six times is what i normally go and then what we want to do on the last one we just want to loop it through that end knot there so it goes like that so it basically forms this loop and you're probably familiar with this one because when we pull that it just undoes itself so it's a very quick release mechanism so put that back in there 
And what that does, it's a slidey knot. See, we can just slide that up and that hold, and that just takes up the slack in our cord. Again, because it's so easy, again, you pull this and it undoes the whole lot. And then what we do then is we clear up, but we'll show you that at the end. So that's a really useful knot. And it will hold, the more of the loops you got, the better it holds. I'll show you that one more time. Live. Just got to undo it there. Quite separate knot. So we've got our live end, we've got a dead end. So two go there, that goes underneath. So we go once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, go round, through the last one, just come back, make a loop. Yeah, tight off like that. Push them all up tight, and then what you do is that you just pull that up and hey presto you've got it i find that the more times you go round the tighter it's going to be it's quite handy see that's not that's not going to go anywhere it's pretty solid i mean if you pull on it obviously it will because it's a slidey knot but that, that's a pretty good way to just uh, relying on no mechanism as at all okay as you can see the top is up and that would be good enough if I just wanted to get under there, get out of the rain, and then just chill out. But if you want to raise the sides up a little bit, so if you want to put a hammock up there and just slouch, and you just want to see out around you, there is a really easy way. Because sometimes you're just, if your peg is going down there, obviously your, your angle is going to be really steep. And there is a trick to just lifting that up a little bit without touching your peg, loosening your, your line off a bit, and, and, and um, I'll, sh I'll show you. And again, luckily for here, there's a tree over there, which I've tied off to, which that's well handy. It sags a little bit there, but I'm not worried about that, because I can tune all that up later if I wanted to. But for now, this is solid. This ain't going nowhere, and I can sit under there quite happily, carving, making a meal, or if I wanted to, I could just put a hammock up or lay a bed down there and just chill out. So I will show you the trick that I learned of just lifting it up and lowering it down without actually moving our pegs. Here we go. Okay, so my trick for lifting this up and getting it a little bit higher is that you want to take a stick that doesn't flex too much, probably about thumb thickness. And then what you want to do is just loosen this knot off a little bit. And what you want to do is just curl that around once, like so, so it's in there like that. Right, and all we do is put that in the ground like that. How easy is that? That's up. Okay, all I can't do now is just go around and adjust it. It's, that's easy, right? So if I want that lower, I just take that down, undo it, tighten a knot up, I'm back to where I was. So again, stick, it probably is about, I don't know, six foot, I guess. I didn't measure it. Around. I'm not even pushing it in the ground, it's just literally leaning there. So you can see it's wobbling. But that is enough to keep that off the ground. And not only that, sometimes if you want to hang something like that, that could mark your lines. Pretty handy. So all I'm going to do now is go around, tighten it all up. Done, finished. Okay, it's all finished, all up. I've been around and I've adjusted all the lines. That's pretty good for what I want it for. If I'm sleeping here, then I'll certainly make this a little bit more homely. But as you can see, it's high enough to stand up in, which I'm doing now, which is really cool. So I can stand here. I can put a, um, a sheet on the floor, sit on the floor, bring a chair and just sit here. Because if you go low enough, and you imagine sitting here in the rain and just looking around at that. The one thing I want to show you while when we pack these little lines up off the hoochie is a real simple way of doing it. And this is this. First of all, remember, pull that knot or that line in a dead end. Okay, and it all comes undone as quick as that. Right, and a method that I use, and I've been using it again 15 odd years, 
is that you put your line, the end of the line there, and what we're going to use is use that, and then you're going to use that part of the finger. What you're going to do is just a figure of eight. So round there, 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 and so on. And so you go all the way up the line, right? And when you get to the end of the line, all you have to do is wrap that round a few times, okay? And then what you do, all I do is form a loop, put it through the loop, pull it, and that's ready for next time. So when I undo it next time, just undo it, pull it out of the loop, and you're good to go. It's as simple as that, okay? A method that works. When you put the main lines away, I normally just fold the hoochie up in the middle, and then just literally wind the, the paracord or the cord that's the main cord around it into a tight ball and it goes in your bag because again you want to get it out you don't want to be messing around with friggin knots in the middle of the night you don't want any of that so you want to keep all your knots basic you want to put everything away so it's not going to tangle and these are the worst things these can get knotted up real quick so that's a good little method of just tidying everything up so when you go to use it it's all ready to go Okay, for anybody who's really interested on those pegs, I'm going to add it in now. So I've just cut myself probably thumb thickness of hazel wand. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my saw. All bushmen should have a good saw. So I'm just going to work out, I'm just going to guess it, right? I've, I've already cut that, so I'm going to use that as my point. I'm just going to cut it here. Cut it flat, because that's where we're going to hit it into the ground with the axe. Okay. Okay, put the saw away. So I've got my tent peg. This is demonstration, so it's only going to be that long. So what I want to do is get my trusty knife. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to score and push down hard. I want to make an X on the back. So I'm just going to literally put the knife and I'm going to angle it. So I'm just going to make a big X on the back and a big X that way. Pushing quite hard. So what then I've got is I've got this little X I've just put in there. And what I'm gonna do, I wanna keep this bit in and I wanna cut the rest of this away. So what you do is you, every time you dig a bit out, you get your knife in and push it in a little bit harder. What I normally do is I try and angle it. Once I've got the cuts there, I try and angle it sort of more inwards. And I'll show you why in a second. Okay, so. What I've done then is I've initially just done that. And why I V'd it like that, as you can see, you can you keep this, but when you cut this bit here, sort of cut in up. And what that allows it to do, as you can see, it causes this angle. So when your string goes through, it actually acts as a little hook, which is quite handy. I mean, you can go as deep as you want, obviously not making it weak. You don't want that to just snap off. So that's why, you know, a thumb thickness, a finger thickness is probably the ideal size. Any bigger than that, you're just wasting your time. It's only a peg, all right? And the good thing about these, if you make them, you can keep them, you know? And if you wanted to get really smart, you could just round that off with a knife and that help that stop fraying when you smack it with the ax. But, but that's all you need. Okay, we're all packed away. We're ready to go, pack it in, 
pack it out, leave no trace, we all know the bushcraft code. So I hope you enjoyed my interpretation of how to put up a hoochie or a tarp, whatever you want to call it. There are many ways to do it, but this is just my way. So if you liked the video, tell others. If you didn't like it, tell me. Um, well, until next time, catch you later guys.